Today we are dealing with an apparently easy question. We have a Dataverse table and we want to capture the very last record inside that table. Easy, right? It's not. Keep that in mind, inside SharePoint, you have a column called ID. That ID is a numeric value starting from one and it's auto increment number. So the largest number is always the last record. In Dataverse, we don't have something like that. Inside Power Apps, you have an ID field, which is technically a GUID, which has the same name of the entity. So basically, it's not going to be that helpful. But at the same time, we have another field called created. And that created field has date and time that the record has been created. So basically, we may consider that one. But isn't there a better way? How about counting? You know what? Let's get into it and see the challenges. Let me tell you right from the beginning, I don't have a definite answer for that. But there are ways that we can get closer. And as long as we know the limitations, we are good. Let's get into it. For this video, I created a table inside Dataverse, very simple table called Find Lasts. And it has only one field, which is name. And I added rec one, two, three, and four. And they have been all created almost the same time, just a few seconds different, that you can see it inside the sample app that I created. The app that I created has just one data table that is connected to the same table inside Dataverse called Find Lasts. It only shows you two fields. One field is going to be the name. The other field, I just got the created on so that you kind of know in which order they are created. And I put the formatting in a way that you can see the second. So if I run it, you will see that these records are created at 31, 34, 39, and 43. So they are ordered naturally based on the order that they have been created. How can I get the very last one and display it inside this display form. First thing is that I need to connect it to the same data source. So if I click on this drop down, find lasts, we are done with the first element. And it shows us the labels for name and created on. We can add more fields, but at the moment it's not necessary. The only thing is that we need to specify the item for the sky. And that item is supposed to be one specific record here. I can make it very simple like first record of find lasts and I just close the bracket and it shows me the first record. So it really works, not a big deal. Now let's see what are the options inside Dataverse so that we can get the very last record. There are actually many options, but unlike SharePoint that you have an ID field which is naturally ordered from one to whatever the last record is, here we don't have that. The ID that we have here is just a GUID that you really cannot sort it in any form or shape. We have created on, which we can use it to sort and get the very last one based on that. But really, let's see what is available inside Power Apps. Here are our options. First thing that you may think is that let's sort it as descending and use the first function to combine these two and see how it works. Looks easy, right? So let's do it this way. Instead of first, I say, give me the first of the same thing, but say sort and then close this guy, comma, for the sort expression, I'm going to use this record dot created on. And I just give it the type descending sort order dot descending, right? And boom, it gives us the very last record with one double underscore that if you have taken my delegation warning course on Udemy, now you are super sensitive to this and say, oh, hold on a second. Do we have delegation issue here? It works, so it may not work on the large data sets. So as soon as we hit a certain number, this is going to fail. And let's see how it fails here. So I can go here to the settings of this app. And I can set the data row limit, which is 500 naturally. Let me set it to 
2. So let's say it's not going to work properly if there is anything more than two records. So let's see how it behaves. So let me just save it. I go back here, refresh, and boom, you will see it shows you the second record. So basically, if you have anything more than 500 records, which by default any Power Apps app shows as data row limit, it clips the rest of the records and it really does not show you the very last record. So basically our first option, sort and first, although it works on small data sources, it really doesn't do the job for us on large sets. So here the delegation warning did not end very well. Second option is going to be, hold on a second, if you have first function, do we have something called last? Yes, we do. So instead of doing anything here, I want to say, don't show me the first, show me the last record. And I don't need sort anymore. Just put the find last the table name here and boom, oops. Again, it's going to show us the second record. Let's refresh it. Maybe it still works because I don't see any delegation warning. Now, that's the same thing, which is even worse because in this case, Although there is actually delegation issue, but it doesn't show you the warning. I call them invisible delegation warnings in my course, but you never know until you really test it. Of course, for something like that, if I go back to my setting and increase the data row limits to, for example, 500 again, it works as long as the entire records inside your Dataverse table stays below 500. So now here, if I just say refresh, everything is good and it shows you the fourth record. Let's change it back to two because we still need to test some other options. All right, close. Let's refresh it and it still shows us the second record. All right, not good so far. Third one, shall we use index and count if? Hmm, this one sounds a little bit promising. I can count the rows inside this table and if I just use count if, I'm not using count rows. I completely cover the difference between count if and count rows. Count if gives you the real time count of the records in a table. Count rows doesn't. It usually refers to a cache that is already counted and saved somewhere. So this is the accurate one. And I just need to put a condition. If I put true, I think I'm good. So. Now I have the count. When I have the count, if I use index, index accepts a table, which is find lasts. And I can say, give me the one that has the index of the count, which is going to be the very last one. All right. So let me just save it. And immediately you see the error. You say, huh, the second parameter of the index has to be something between one and two. Why? Because we set the data row limit to two. So it cannot be more than two. While when we are using count if, it returns four. Does it work if we change the data row limit? Yeah, let's give it a shot. I set it to, for example, 500 again, and I save it, refresh, and it works happily ever after. Just like the other examples, count if, and index fail when it comes to any number beyond your data row limit. So count if is fine, but index fails. The last thing that I could think of if it could use max and filter. Let's give it a shot. For this one, I want to use this button to get the max or the highest value of the state and put it in a variable. Let's see how we can do that. Let's say set, I call it var underscore max state. And I use the max function. I want to use find last. And for the expression, I want to put this record dot created on. And I close this one and I close it. Immediately you will see that max complains that it does not work properly with delegation. Max actually supports delegation, but only on numeric field. Because this is date, it doesn't do the trick. So at the moment, if I just run it and push the button, it returns the last value, 
properly, which is 43, which is the very last one, only because I have set the value of this data row limit to something high, like 500. If I put it like as two, this one also fails. So I can click on this one, and this time you will see, yes, it shows you the value, but clips all the records after the second record because it only sees the first two records as my data row limit. So again, for this one, if we max out the data row limit, which is 2000 here, up to 2000 records, it works fine. You cannot set it to 2001 because all of a sudden it says the highest value that you can assign to the data row limit is 2000. We have multiple solutions that they all work, but only for the record count below 2000. So whatever we covered by now, they are valid solutions. They all work very well, as long as the number of your records stay below 2000. They are easy to maintain because simply using the last function will do the trick for you. Now, let's see how we can solve this problem when we go beyond 2000. And that's the juicy part of this video. First of all, your answer is not inside Power Apps. Your answer is in Dataverse. But before we get there, remember I said Max supports delegation perfectly, but on a numeric field, not on a date field. So what if we add that numeric field ourselves? Let's give it a shot and see if it can pass this barrier. So I go inside Dataverse, I find the same table, which is find last. And inside this guy, I click on this plus, and I create an index field, for example, my dummy index. The type is going to be numeric. I pick whole number, technically an integer. And the required or not required, it doesn't really matter. I just save it. And all of a sudden, I have a new column here. It's called my dummy index, and I put numbers there, one, two, three, four. So now we have a field from one to four, and I would say if I add another record here, that should be five. So let's say rec five, or whatever we want to call it, and this field is gonna be five. So technically, if you're searching for max of my dummy index, is gonna work while created on couldn't. Let's take you to Power Apps and see how it really works. First, I need to refresh this guy because I updated the schema. Yeah, the same error is sitting there, who cares? I just go back to my button first, and instead of max date, I call it max index. And instead of putting the this record dot created on, I pick the index field that I created, and I call it my dummy index. No complaint, which is fantastic. Now, let's go back here and go to the settings and make sure this is two. So if we run this and it returns the very last record, we are golden. So let me just run it. I push this button, no complaints. Now, if I click on this guy, it contains five, which is perfect. We got the last record, although based on our data row limit, we could see up to the second row. So we passed this delegation limit. Now, I have a variable. And if I come back here, and instead of this index, I can use filter or lookup. Because I need one record, lookup is the preferred way of filtering it. I say the table name find lasts, comma, and I say this record dot my dummy index equals the max value that I got from that button. Save, and it shows me the very last record. So we managed to get the very last record and we passed all the delegation limits, but one thing to be aware of, you may think, why did I put this button here? For two reasons. First of all, I can put this code in a timer control here. Let's say insert timer. And this timer comes on the screen, for example. And on this timer, I can say every, for example, five seconds, 30 seconds, just refresh this variable 
So it always shows the latest record, even if I'm not the user who is adding it. Someone else adds it every five seconds, every 10 seconds. It goes to the database table, checks everything and brings it here. So this is one way. The other reason that I put it here, you may think, hey, why don't I bring the whole max here instead of putting in a variable and directly put it in this formula, in this lookup formula, and I paste it here. I'm afraid it doesn't work. Although the logic is the same, but the lookup logic and the delegation engine behind it is not smart enough to understand, to process it only once. It says, hey, it's a formula, so I have to process it for every single record. So again, you hit the wall with the delegation. So let it stay the way it was and put it in a separate variable. And in this case, everything works perfectly. And by the way, just a quick reminder that you really don't need to add a numeric field and add the values yourself. Dataverse has an automatic number field called auto number. And if you pick this one as the data type for the column that you want to maintain the index, this one will automatically take care of everything. So every new record that is added to your data table, it automatically increments one number and you just use it for the index and lookup. And finally, if you want to get into more details about table functions, I have the course called Master Microsoft Power Apps Table Functions on Udemy. And if you really want to dig into Power Apps delegation issues and how to resolve and go around it, I have a three hour course on Udemy called How to Fix Microsoft Power Apps Delegation Warning. You can check the video description for the discount code for every single one of these courses. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know where the like button is. Thank you for watching. And if you really, really enjoyed this video, a subscribe is really appreciated. I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, happy coding.